Hey there, it's Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I've got a fun little project to work on and I wanted to share and kind of guide you through the process. So a buddy of mine, Matt, I'll link some of his stuff down below, you can check it out. He's a great artist, does some really cool stuff, and he's working on this little shooter game and wanted to add mobile support so you could run around and shoot with a mobile device, you know, play on an iPad or a phone. Uh, let me show you what it looks like regular mode first on a PC and then I'll show you the steps involved in switching it over and making it mobile playable. So here you go, I can run around, I can shoot, uh, I've muted the audio, but there's a lot of sound effects going on here too. I can jump and I can right click and go into a more of a uh, an aiming accuracy style mode and maybe kill this guy. Or I could switch back over to this mode and maybe fail to kill the guy. Okay, yeah, I think I'm dead. Okay, anyway, I think you get the idea. You can run around WASD and you can shoot. And then you can also switch to a, a sniper slash aiming mode where you can aim and hit things a little bit better. So how are we gonna set this up to work for a mobile device? Well, luckily, with the standard assets pack, cross-platform controls are already kind of built into the engine, or at least super available. So the first thing you'll want to do is import in the standard assets pack from the asset store. Once you've done that, and this project already has it, you'll need to look in the cross-platform section. So if we go down to, let's see, standard assets, and we go to cross-platform input, and then we go to the prefabs folder, I'm gonna switch this to the list view, by the way, it's just hold control and drag the mouse wheel or use this little slider. And the one that stands out that we wanna use is the mobile single stick control. We don't need dual controls, we just need one and a button really for this game. So what we're gonna do is take this mobile single stick control and just drop it into the scene. So now let's see, let's go to the scene view. Let's actually just pull the scene view over here and dock it. And I'm gonna go to 2D mode and zoom out a little bit. Let's see, let's see if we can find the controls here. You may notice that it's missing and it's not enabled. That's because uh, we don't have it turned on right now. Well, we kind of do, but it's not gonna work. And I'm gonna show you why. So if we go to mobile input, this gets added by the way when you import the mobile assets or the, uh, the standard assets with the cross-platform input section. So I'm gonna hit disable and then I'm gonna hit enable. And you'll see this little error message here saying, hey, you have, essentially you have a non-mobile build target set, so these things don't show up. So that's why just dropping this onto the scene doesn't give us anything, because we're in a mobile mode and we, or we're not in a mobile mode and we need to switch to one. So I need to go to file, build settings, and I'm just gonna switch over to Android. And then I'll hit switch platform. And uh, this project's a little bit big, so it's gonna take a minute. But well, whatever your size your project is, if it's reasonable and small, it should be relatively quick to make this switch. Okay, now that's done. It was about 20 minutes for me, by the way. Um, we've got the thing imported, and now I'm going to re-disable and enable our mobile settings. Oh, there we go, I've disabled it, and I'm gonna re-enable it right now. I don't know why it keeps popping up the code, but now it's enabled. So now we actually see the control here. I'm gonna close this window and just double click on the button and zoom out a little bit here. So here you see we've got a little touchpad object and a button that says jump in white text on a white. Not, not ideal, but I think you get the idea of where we're gonna be hooking these things up. Now Matt provided some extra art that's a little bit better than this, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap that in. And in his project, I think he just called it Joystick and Joystick BG. So right here is the sprite. So on this, uh, sorry, on the mobile joystick right here, we have the sprite for the controller. And I'm gonna swap in his, just grabbing this joystick one. You can see it already looks kinda cooler, I think. And then he also had a background. Now to add the background, I'm just gonna right click on my mobile single stick control and add an image. And then assign that joystick background image there. And then I'm gonna center this. Let's see, let's get it right back. Um, well, I think I wanna put it right down in the corner actually. So I'm gonna pivot it off the bottom left corner and grab the move tool and just move it up. Oh, I don't know, right around here. And then I'm gonna double the scale. I want, or let's actually just double the width and the height. I want this nice and big. And I'm gonna go to the game view so you can see what I'm looking at. 
So I'm trying to put this, actually I think I want it right around here. Well, let's switch into um, into a real resolution. Let's go to, uh, let's go to 16 by 10 landscape. So yeah, I think I want it right about here. So I'm just gonna drag that piece over, get it kind of in position. Ah, oh, right about there. Now I'm gonna move this mobile joystick and get that centered up there. So that's kind of right in the middle. Just grab the X and the Y. And then I wanna move this image, cause this is the background. I just wanted to move it up above. I want it rendering before the actual thumb stick or the joystick part. I'm gonna just rename this to background. So now if I hit play, Let's see what happens. I can grab this little controller and I can move it around. Um, wasty, I'm still just shooting and I'm not moving with it. So how are we gonna fix this? Well, what we need to do is look at our code that's actually moving the player. In this case, it's this player move script on his hero. So I'm gonna open that up and it's actually right here where we need to look. So if you look at this, so we've got input.getAxisRaw and we're getting the horizontal and the vertical axis and then it's doing some movement stuff. I'm not sure where this movement uh, script came from, maybe from a pack, maybe something that he wrote, but um, we need to make a little bit of a modification to it. We're going to replace this with cross platform input manager, just like that. Now if the casing is right, I can hit control period and add the using statement automatically. So it's not showing up blue because it doesn't know because doesn't know what it is because it's in this other namespace. So we need to get that using statement in there. Now I'm just gonna copy that and paste it over the input there and save. And now when we jump in, our player or the hero here should be reading from the cross platform input instead of the regular input system. So now I should be able to drag this and walk in, control my character. Now you see he's still shooting that's because we haven't moved the shooting stuff over to a button yet, and it's grabbing whenever I touch anywhere on the screen, it's shooting. So that's why he's, he's walking really slow and shooting the whole time. But he is moving. So let's make the other change now. What we need to do is go to this jump button. So by default, there's a jump button in there. And I'm gonna rename the button handler's name part here to fire. Now, we also want to make this button look different. Right now it says jump with some text in it and it's an ugly white button. First I'm gonna delete that text. And now let's swap out this sprite. So I don't want this big white box. Let's search for Joy again. I think he had, or no, I'm gonna go into this folder that he's got here and see what other sprites he had. I think he had a shoot button. Uh, we got shoot, shoot active, shoot static. Yeah, I think that's what we want. So I'm gonna go to the jump button and drop in the shoot static image. There we go, you can see it's kind of showing up. It doesn't show up great though on here. Now let's um, anchor this to the bottom right. So hold down control and alt, set the pivot and the anchor, and then I'll set the size of this to 200 by 200. Now oh, that might be a little bit big. Let's turn it down to 150 by 150. Now I've got a fire button there. It's not really that visible though, and it's still named jump button. So I'm gonna select this thing and rename it to fire button. And then I'm gonna add another child under here. So we'll just create a UI sprite, or image, sorry, not a sprite. And then I'm gonna add this uh, shoot active as the source image. And then we'll set that again to, what was it, 150 by 150. So what I wanna do is make this thing show up when I'm pressing it and disappear when I'm not pressing it. So to do that, I'll just go to this fire button. And here, remember, we have this event trigger section and we've got a pointer down and a pointer up event. So I'm just gonna tie into those. So I'll just add another handler to the pointer down and I'll assign the image. And then under the drop down here, we'll select game object dot set active. And this is when the pointer is down. So it's when we're touching it. So I want it to be checked. I want it to be active. Now when we're not pressing it, we're gonna hit plus again to add another event handler. We'll drop the image in again and go to game object and set active, but we're not pressing it, so we want it to be inactive. So let's save the scene, and remember again, make sure that the button handler right here, the name needs to be redone to match what your code is looking for. In this case, the code is looking for a fire button. 
If yours is looking for fire one, then you need to change this to fire one. If it's looking for something else, you need to change it to that specific thing. So we're almost done with that, but there's still one thing we haven't hooked up, and that's the code that's actually looking for the fire button. Right now, let's let's actually go take a look at it. So here it is. His is in this player aiming script, and you see again it's just calling input.getButton and it's looking for fire. So you may have already guessed what we want to add here is cross platform input manager. And again, I hit control period and add the using statement so that it completes, turns blue, and everything works. Now let's go back into the editor, hit play, and I should be able to walk around and shoot independently. Let's give it a shot. There we go, so I start to walk, I can move, everything's good, and when I hold down this button I can shoot. So, and if I click anywhere else, I'm not shooting. So I think this kind of shows just how easy this is to set up. You really just need to set up um, the prefab, get the prefab in there, make sure that you're on a mobile device and that you've enabled mobile input here. By the way, the enabling of mobile input there, what it's really doing, let me just show you real quick. If you go to edit, project settings, and player, it's actually just setting these cross, or these scripting defined symbols. So we got cross platform input and it's turning on and off this mobile input one. If I stop playing and disable mobile input, um, I don't know, if, okay, it does update in there. So you can see it updating in there real time. And then I turn it back on and it's just adding that back in. And then what happens is the code is looking for those defiance with the uh, pound if, and then the, uh, the mobile input or whatever it is. Just like you would check to see if you're in the editor or something else. It's just another if check that know whether or not you're on the right thing and whether or not the options should be enabled. So I think that's all I want to cover for setting this up today. Um, if you have other buttons, obviously you can just duplicate this button and then you know hook up the other event to it so that it's calling something else. It's not just calling the fire, it could call jump or it could call the toggle mode that we're going to need for this so that we can switch into shooting mode. Anyway, thanks for watching, and if you have questions or comments or just some suggestions, you know, other people watching this and you have some tip that maybe I didn't cover, please just drop a comment below and share, let everybody know, and if you have questions, I'll try to answer them as quick as I can. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share with your friends and subscribe and all that fun stuff.